Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, September 14th, 2012. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description. We're covering the police state, Big Brother, and hopefully get some eugenics in here in this video. So we just covered about the police uh, brutality and stuff like that. Nothing really new there. Uh, just building the case uh, for cops being illegitimate, not to get you all infuriated to start getting violent against them. Uh, because really, they think that they have power over you, and you just, I guess the biggest thing is just allowing them, or not allowing them, but giving them the perception that they have authority or power over you, right? So, uh, and not really try to instigate them. Just do what you got to do, and anything that you do will be offensive to them. That's the whole thing about what I was talking about, getting tickets when there's no victims. You know, you speed, where's the victims, Right. Uh, you didn't turn on your turn signal, who got hurt, right? Nobody. Well, the way the police act is it's an offense. You offended them. You've offended the city of whatever, right? You offended them. That's an, uh, you basically, you, uh, there's a victim there and it's them. So that's how they assume it. So you got to kind of look at it from their perspective, which is completely ridiculous. Anyways, so now they got cameras to watch other cameras because people are shooting them and, and c pulling the cords out and stuff like that. Uh, law enforcement is now getting um, a bunch of information from the Internet uh, to help law enforcement. But then we move on to this. Rochester City employees caught by red light cameras 119 uh, times. And it goes on here. It says violators won't have to pay. We're just talking about how these uh, NYPD officers are actually killing hostages as they're trying to get away and one of them actually crashed into an SUV the driver was reportedly sitting at a red light when the speeding officer careened into him so yeah um, now they're going through cameras and stuff like that going through lights and they're hitting people and uh, they're getting tickets that they're not going to pay for um, this is my website if you're new uh, GGN or Global Government News ggnonline.com there's a poll up here what well, uh, was the production and coverage of the anti-muslim film a ploy by the zionists to incite anger towards the u.s for not supporting an israeli attack on iran so far 66 percent of the voters are saying yes followed by 11 percent saying maybe and 22 percent saying not sure um you have a news archive over here also i'd like to thank those who donated to me recently it's very much appreciated everything helps Okay, so the next article I have up uh, talking about Big Brother is Big Brother Peeping Tom in the UK. They're installing CCTV cameras in school bathrooms and changing rooms. Over 200 UK state schools have installed cameras and bathrooms and changing rooms to monitor students. A recent surveillance uh, survey reported British parents will likely be shocked by the stu study's findings. And I can't really get rid of that thing there, but it says surveys based on a freedom of information request conducted by Big Brother Watch. The report will come as a shock to many parents, says the director of the Big Brother. Schools need to come clean about why they're using these cameras and what is happening to the footage. There's a total of 825 cameras installed in the bathrooms and changing rooms of 207 different schools across, across England. And this has to do with um, the future of generations, right? You got those old people shooting out, um, you know, old people giving that cop shit. Um, you got, uh, you know, people in my generation, Generation X, whatever, shooting uh, at uh, cameras or stop signs. Well, the younger generation, that's the target, really. So when they go through the TSA at the airports and now the bus stations and now train stations, and they're going to get um, basically violated, their personal space violated by some total stranger, right? Now, this is, this is horrible because th now they're in the bathrooms as well. So this is to tell them they have no privacy. This is a psychological, not experiment, this is programming for the future. To tell them that you're living, you're going to be living, and you do live in a completely uh, monitored state. And there's nothing you can do about it. So unfortunately, this is going to get your blood boiling, but this is like everything else, right? you got to question their, uh, the legitimacy of their authority. Well, the principal of this re-education camp says in southern England that the cameras in her school are one per bathroom or located nowhere near the to toilet cubicles. Well, I know why they're in there for smoking, whatever, but they don't belong in a bathroom, right? You know? says here, the images are not looked at unless there's been a reported problem and images are deleted after a maximum of 30 days. So if you believe that, you go ahead and believe that and you'd be naive, right? More surveillance cameras to curb high-rise littering. So this is a new thing 
a new trend. From August 30th, 2012, residents in five estates will have surveillance cameras deployed in their estates to curb high-rise littering. The National Environment Agency said the next three months, cameras will be mounted on rooftops 100 locations. The NEA said there are more serious littering cases and regular complaints from residents in some parts of these neighborhoods. Those caught littering on camera will be charged in court and have their cases publicized. They said their surveillance cameras, together with video analytic software, and this of course is going into pre-crime, have proven effective in trials conducted in the NAB high-rise litter bugs. So, you know, I don't like cigarette butts being thrown around and stuff like that. But I don't think everybody should be, should be surveilled, especially when you know how ridiculous it's going to get. This is, again, Alaska. That was in Singapore. Now this is Alaska trash cams catch litter bugs in the act. So, yeah, I mean, this sucks when people do that and they dump on the sides of roads and stuff like that. Um, we have, what, EcoSnoop iPhone allows you to report polluters. So this is what it really is getting all about, about um, this iPhone app that allows for allows you to report polluters in your neighborhood without being worried about repercussions so plus you can post them on the web and embarrass your neighbors into stop being such an inconsiderate jerk so just like the chatting with the police in that last video in the beginning um, it's about getting uh, people uh, more used to snitching out on each other so because we know that the that the governments don't give a shit about the environment they especially the EPA the Green Police are no longer a joke. The UN may create an army of green helmets to fight climate change from July of last year. Just thought I'd throw it in there. Talking about peacekeeping, right? And humanitarian missions. Well, now they're going to be fighting for the for the planet. Green helmets. Newfound Newfoundland trash problem. St. John's hiring security to catch polluters. So moving on here, we have Harper government monitoring online chats about politics, correcting what it calls misinformation. I love how they always say that, too. The Harper government has been monitoring political messages online, even correcting what it considers misinformation. So they're the king of misinformation, i.e. the government and the media, most of the mainstream media. Uh, so when you try to correct them or try to break through their bullshit lies, they call it misinformation and they need to correct it. So that's when everything is upside down, right? United Russia mulls amendments to track anonymous internet slanders. Moving up, we have Russia's parliamentary majority party announced it will support amendments to a hotly contested libel law in order to find and punish those who post anonymous insults on the internet. The law already per, uh, includes the norms providing responsibility for journalists, right? What about the journalists that sit there on CBS and Diane Sawyer and they push all this crap, right? Uh, they're not telling the truth most of the time, they're, and they're uh, distorting it uh, uh, a lot. <laughs> I mean, they're twisting it a lot. Uh, but then we have, what shall we do if some anonymous user makes insulting statements? Ooh, you don't want to be bullied or harassed, right? And that's why uh, recently I noticed on Go on YouTube they've been uh, trying to coerce me and force me into putting my full real name onto my YouTube account, which is fine. I mean, uh, people that donate, you see my real name, uh, even in certain uh, parts on uh, my profiles you'll see my full name you know but uh you know what's this whole thing of forcing you to put all your personal shit on there if you don't want to license plate readers because it's about dissent they want to be able to do that so license plate readers create massive intelligence database talking about these little cameras on these cars so here they go uh do you want to have these cameras all over there you know uh, you know it's just a video recording everything well you don't have any privacy there's no expectation of privacy and they're just telling you now they're going to try to sell this to you, right? This is engineered consent. I didn't, you know, did you get anything in the mail about this stuff? Did I get any? No, we didn't. We didn't get asked. It's not a fucking democracy. We don't all have a say. This isn't some merry, happy Brady Bunch show. This is a fucking dictatorship. This is called engineered consent. So they will tell you why you're going to like it and why you're going to accept it, even though you don't have a choice. Over the past two years, roof-mounted license plate readers, a kind of high-tech surveillance camera, have quietly led authorities in the Pikes Peak region to score uh, scores of stolen vehicles. Uh, they have also helped capture fugitives and kept tabs on paroled sex offenders, all by uh, automatically scanning roads and parking lots with lightning-fast optics capable of photographing a license plate in the blink of an eye, or hundreds of license plates during a single patrol. So, you know, if you're... If you're, um, if you're not for this, then you're all for this, right? But according to documents obtained by the Gazette under the Colorado Open Records Act, the devices are watching more than just lawbreakers. Then the Colorado Springs report, police report shows that the use of license plate readers has allowed the city's department to construct a searchable databank, databank 
uh, containing hundreds of thousands of license plates belonging to ordinary drivers uh, with each entry disclosing when and where police last spied on a certain vehicle, which potentially gives investigators a view into where people travel and how they spend their time. So this is pretty crazy. So we're talking about pre-crime. We're talking about analytics. So here you go, blood boiling again. I they, they, Right here, Captain Dave Santos of Colorado State Highway Patrol says, I don't see the violation of privacy. I just don't. He added that Colorado driving is a privilege rather than a right, which is just a complete... Uh, uh, just again, it's just a flat-out uh, lie. Uh, you do have the right to travel freely and un unhindered by getting uh, harassed by these douchebags. And he drew a legal distinction between tracking license plates and individuals. See, in the Plato's Republic that we're living in of engineer consent, like I was talking about, it's all about privileges, right? Everything is a privilege, and all these laws are out there. Uh, so basically, everyone can be considered a possible criminal. So you have no expectation of privacy. You have no expectation of not being uh, messed with by authorities because you could be guilty. Let's just assume that you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Then we have feds say mobile phone location data not constitutionally protected. So they don't need a constitution to spy on you. We all know that. The Obama regime told a federal court Tuesday that the public has no reasonable expectation of privacy in cell phone location data. Well, that's because there's nothing that they can do about it. As long as you voluntarily carry a cell phone, you carry a GPS device, that uh, under uh, terrorism laws and that uh, can be accessed by these local police uh, uh, offices, departments. But they're not just local police departments. These are federal agencies right in your local city because they're all federalized, they're all militarized, and they're all fused. They're called fusion centers or uh, intelligence sharing networks. Every state has them. They say authorities may obtain documents detailing a person's movements from wireless carriers without probable cause warrant. So... Apple, we didn't pass iPhone, iPad device IDs to FBI. Both the FBI and now Apple have come forward to say, state that they had no involvement uh, the ongoing Utagate, which led to more than 1 million iOS device codes leaking to the web. So one of the things that the, that the authorities like to, the game they like to play to give the illusion that you have some kind of decision or choice, and then it's called democracy, is what? Is warrants, is the Constitution. Uh, political law, those are all things that are on their side to be used against you. I just want to put that out there. So, Apple rejects application that tracks U.S. drone strikes. It seems simple enough idea for iPhone. Send users a pop-up notice whenever a flying robot kills someone in America's many undeclared wars, but Apple keeps blocking the Drones Plus program from its Apple store and therefore from iPhones everywhere. The Cupertino company says the content is objectionable and crude. So, Objectionable and crude, so that's truth. See, truth. So, you know, they want to go on there and monitor your online chats and say that, well, you don't agree with um, children, women, and innocent farmers being uh, hit by a fucking predator drone for doing absolutely nothing against the American people or me or you. We had no say over that, but it's under our name. We pay for it, and uh, we pay for it with our, with our um, reputation, just like what's going on right now with uh, the Middle East and the anti- um, Islam uh, uh, film that was made by Zionists, right? And just, oh, now it's America, so everybody hates America even more now. Television stations could start using drones to cover news stories. A drone originally developed for military use could soon be used by television stations and journalists as a news-gathering device. In Australia, they're moving to buy $3 billion worth of spy drones. The Defense Force is quietly resurrecting plans to buy seven huge maritime surveillance spy drones at a cost of up to $3 billion. Well, maybe your carbon tax will pay for that, Aussies. And back to Australia, U.S. flew spy drone missions from Australia. They flew highly classified Global Hawk spy drone missions from the Royal Australian Air Force Base in Edinburgh in South Australia from late 2001 to at least 2006. Not really surprised, though, because they were trying to get a base going, Marine Base in Darwin. So, again, not going away. Police to use drones for spying on citizens. Law enforcement agencies will fly drones according to documents obtained by EFF. They even have kamikaze drones, military robots set to self-destruct. So it's a big business, right? They now can be produced cheaply enough to crash them into enemy targets. Just wait till it's you barbecue in your backyard, but don't worry, you get to pay for it to Northrop Grumman and all of them. Army wants tiny suicidal drone to kill from six miles away September 10th. It's for when the Army needs someone dead from up to, up to six miles away in 30 minutes or less. Army is also working on hummingbird drones, also owl drones. And as police adopt the first drone code of conduct, the first drone university takes flight. Thank you.